Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to start our Basel Hepatology webinar. Today's moderator, Professor Daniel Schobel, would you please start the session? Hello. Uh, it is my real pleasure uh, on, the, on, the, on behalf of the Asian Pacific Association of the Liver to um, present to you Professor Fabian Zulim, who uh, is a well known to most of us as a leading virologist and hepatologist, especially in hepatitis B. Professor Zulim uh, is uh, an associate uh, editor of the Journal of GUT, uh, is member of a number of international organizations and ANRS, has published hundreds of papers and has over 20,000 citations of his work. He is considered one of the top virologists uh, in hepatitis B and it is really our pleasure uh, to hear his uh, talk on exciting development in the treatment of hepatitis B. Professor Zulin, please. Uh, so, hello, uh, uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on when you are uh, uh, in the globe. So, I would like uh, first to, um, to thank the uh, APASL for this uh, uh, invitation to give this webinar uh, uh, on the drug development in hepatitis B. And I would like also to thank um, Professor Chouval for the kind uh, introduction. Uh, as you all know, the uh, uh, development of new drugs in the field of chronic hepatitis B is be becoming uh, extremely uh, exciting. Um, and the uh, um, scientific community uh, has made a consensus to uh, define what we want to achieve for for the next generation of drug, uh, and it was um, decided that um, the uh, the main goal of the new therapies will be to achieve a functional cure, um, which is the um, elimination of HBS antigen in serum uh, with a finite duration uh, treatment, and this uh, HBS antigen uh, clearance in serum. Um, is associated with uh, vowel suppression, but might be still associated with the persistence uh, of low-level intrahepatic CCC DNA in the liver, as well as integrated forms. Uh, the more ambitious goals, which are complete cure or sterilizing cure, where all forms of HBV DNA uh, in the liver would be eradicated, uh, are, are really for the next phase of, uh, of development of drugs. So having said that, um, and having defined the, uh, um, the, uh, the goals for uh, achieving a, cu a cure of HBV infection, uh, there are barriers to, to, to achieve these goals. And they mainly rely on two um, main mechanisms. One is on the uh, vowel life cycle uh, side, which is mainly the persistence uh, in the infected hepatocyte of the vowel CCC DNA, which is uh, the archive of the virus in the infected cells. And as you know, it has a long half-life. It is continuously replenished in the, in the liver, and it is not really affected uh, by the current drugs such as nucleoside analogs and interferon alpha. And the other important factor that is um, um, important in terms of uh, achieving a cure is the fact that uh, in chronically infected patients, um, we see uh, that they have defective immune responses, uh, de uh, uh, defective innate immune responses, as well as defective uh, adaptive immune responses, both on the HBV-specific CD8 T cells and the HBV-specific B cell responses. So the new therapies will have to, to tackle both problems uh, to achieve higher rate of HBS loss. To achieve this, we, we need a, a translational uh, approach. Um, which um, relies on the better knowledge of, of the vowel life cycle uh, and the immunopathogenesis of, uh, uh, of the infection to identify new targets, uh, either in, uh, in cell culture model or in animal models, uh, and uh, also novel biomarkers that will need to be um, 
confirmed uh, in clinical studies. So um, a translational studies will be very important to um, confirm the target identification, the biomarkers, and then clinical trials uh, will be necessary uh, to um, evaluate the novel treatment regimens so that we can improve uh, the rate of functional cure and in the end prevent the risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. Based on the current knowledge, um, novel uh, VAL targets have been uh, uh, characterized and many drugs are now being um, uh, under a clinical evaluation. And they uh, include uh, most of the key steps of the viral life cycle, including uh, uh, viral entry inhibitors, uh, drugs that target the release of HBS antigen, uh, strategies that target viral transcript in, in, in the liver, um, drugs that are uh, targeting nucleocapsid assembly, um, as well uh, as drugs that are more in the preclinical uh, development phase, so in, uh, in experimental models, there are strategies that address um, uh, the targeting of CCC DNA. On the uh, other part, we have also uh, strategies that aim at reviving and releasing endogenous uh, adaptive immunity. Uh, and they uh, rely uh, on uh, checkpoint uh, uh, modulation, and you all know the checkpoint inhibitors that are developed in, in the oncology field. Um, uh, cytokines and uh, um, uh, boosters of innate immunity to also uh, help in boosting um, uh, adaptive uh, responses for HBV specific T and B cell responses and uh, therapeutic uh, vaccination. So these uh, um, approaches are being uh, developed um, and at the same time we need to also validate uh, novel biomarkers to assess target engagements and treatment endpoints uh, that will be very important to uh, assist clinical development of new drugs. Uh, beside the classic uh, VAR load evaluation uh, that um, uh, reflects the uh, replication capacity of, of the virus uh, from the CCC DNA, um, they are uh, the uh, uh, what you all know the uh, clinically available quantitative HBS antigen, uh, which is a reflect not only of the expression of HBS from CCC DNA but also from integrated sequences. So, so this biomarker is not as simple uh, as we, we were hoping to. So there are other uh, biomarkers that are in clinical development, circulating viral RNAs and HBC-related antigen, um, which are thought to be uh, um, more relevant for the evaluation uh, of the pool of CCC DNA and its transcriptional activity. So they are used now in the evaluation of new drugs. And here I'm showing you just a, a selection of the few uh, uh, new treatments uh, that have been already investigated in, in patients, so that are ongoing, uh, undergoing uh, clinical trials, phase 1b, phase 2a, and phase 2b now. So you see here quite a lot of dr drugs and compounds uh, that are in clinical development. So now the, um, uh, so the real question is how are we going to uh, combine this, uh, uh, these new drugs uh, to achieve uh, better, better uh, uh, cure rate? And we have drugs that inhibits clinic uh, replication drugs that reduce antigen expression and approaches that uh, stimulate uh, the immune responses, either on the innate immunity side or on the adaptive immunity side. So I will show you uh, some example of what we have seen now in clinical development. Here, first of all, uh, a question is whether we can combine um, uh, drugs that uh, inhibit viral replication and would 
uh, induce a more profound uh, inhibition of our application and maybe a CCC DNA loss uh, at the end, just with direct antiviral. So this is really the question. So combining nu nucleoside analogs and capsid assembly modulators. Uh, and I'm showing you here re results of fa phase 1b studies uh, of capsid assembly modulators uh, that showed quite a, a, a strong inhibition of HPV DNA uh, and uh, uh, other biomarkers such as HBV RNA and HBC related antigen that have been published uh, very recently. It's just uh, phase 1b studies, 28 days dosing, um, and uh, obviously it was too short to, to see an effect on HBS antigen and, and the decrease of CCC DNA. So the question was whether we can do uh, longer uh, administration in combination with nuke and see what, 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 what happens. And here I'm showing you what, what, one recent study shown at the uh, easel at the end of August uh, with Vebicorvir uh, uh, capsid assembly modulator that was uh, done in HB positive uh, chronic HB patients. Uh, um, uh, in combination with antecavir in, in, in orange um, and in comparison with antecavir alone. And the patients who received antecavir uh, monotherapy were then switched to a combination with the uh, with Vebicovir. So at the end, in the second phase of the trial, all patients were on combination therapy. And you see that after 72 weeks of therapy, it's a longer administration of CPAM so far, um, we see a quite a dramatic suppression of HPV DNA, which one was more pronounced in the combination uh, uh, arm. It was associated with a pregenomic RNA reduction in serum, HBC-related antigen in serum, as well as some decline in HBS antigen uh, in serum. Now the question is whether uh, we, at this stage we can stop treatment um, or whether we would need to continue to induce more prolonged viral suppression and in the end elimination of CCC DNA. Or uh, another question would be to add, uh, for instance, immune uh, stimulation uh, based on this uh, background of a profound uh, viral suppression. Another strategy is to combine uh, an inhibition of replication with nukes with an antigen reduction uh, strategy with siRNA or antisense oligonucleotide. You see here is the, uh, uh, really the uh, um, uh, pioneer experience with um, uh, Arrowhead, followed now by Jensen, uh, who uh, um, uh, studied the siRNA in nuke suppressed patients looking at the effect on HBS antigen. And you see that after three uh, injection uh, of siRNA, um, uh, the uh, HBS antigen uh, response was sustained for, for uh, uh, almost a year uh, after the end of um, uh, siRNA administration in 40% in of patients. So this is really uh, uh, something that is promising. There are other siRNA formulations that have been presented at ASLD a couple of weeks ago. Um, for instance, um, uh, from uh, um, uh, Arbutus uh, uh, with a Galnac uh, delivery of siRNA, uh, uh, several injection look uh, of siRNA, and you see a very nice decline of. Uh, uh, almost two log uh, of HBS antigen. So this is uh, something promising. And there was also this RNA dev developed by Dicerna uh, and Roche, presented also by Professor Yuan, who, who showed a very nice decline uh, of HBS um, of approximately two log. So um, now we'll have to see uh, how this will go. Uh, and uh, um, there are also other approaches to decrease HBS antigen expression uh, with antisense oligonucleotides. And this was presented at EASL uh, three months ago. Um, and uh, in that trial, with a few administration 
uh, of anti-sense uh, oligonucleotide. Uh, there was uh, also a profound decline in HBS antigen uh, level, as you can see here, um, two logs or more. And interestingly, in this small trial, four patients lost HBS antigen uh, at day 29, and two remained addictable uh, uh, a, long, a long time uh, uh, after uh, the uh, treatment uh, uh, period. Uh, so now a phase, uh, phase 2b are, 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 have started, so we will see how it goes. Uh, the obvious uh, uh, question is whether we can go to the next step of triple combination of direct acting antivals, so with nucleoside analogs, capsid assembly modulators, and uh, uh, antigen reduction, for instance, with an SI RNA. And Jensen made this. Uh, uh, a very innovative trial, which was presented a year ago uh, at ASLD. Uh, and you see that in this proof of concept study, there was uh, a very nice uh, decline uh, in not only in HBV DNA, but also in HBS antigen. So this is still early days, but this is uh, showing that we can achieve a profound inhibition of our replication in these patients. So now moving from combination of direct antivals is whether we can combine a profound uh, suppression of viral replication with uh, a boosting of innate immunity. So we, we have seen uh, different uh, results of uh, clinical trials with combination of interferon or with some uh, TLR uh, agonist. So we'll show you first the results of uh, uh, an entry inhibitor uh, combination with interferon, which is developed mainly with, for Delta uh, uh, co-infected patients, uh, which is Mircludex. Uh, what I want to, to show you here is that in, in combination with uh, interferon, Mircludex induced uh, quite a profound inhibition uh, of HPV DNA, HDV RNA, sorry, uh, on the Delta uh, virus. But what was interesting to see is the response on HBS antigen. And you see that uh, 72 weeks, so uh, six months after treatment cessation, in patients who received 2 mg Mircludex plus interferon, 40% of them had a more than one log decline uh, in HBS antigen. So we should keep this strategy in mind also for the uh, patients that are infected only with HBV and not only for Delta. Another strategy uh, combining uh, uh, an, an inhibitor for HBS release, uh, uh, a NAP, so a, a, a nucleic acid polymer, um, uh, with tenofovir and interferon, was published recently by Replicor in gastroenterology, showing quite an, uh, an impressive rate of uh, 35% uh, functional cure. Uh, this HBS decline was associated with ALT elevation, uh, which is really under investigation uh, in terms of mechanism. And there are now uh, new findings that have been shown at ESL and ASLD on, on, that, on that respect. So this will be interesting to uh, observe on the, on the long term as well. Another combination is with a nucleoside analogs and a TLR8 agonist, um, which was presented at, at ESL by, by Professor Gain. And it, were, it was shown that this TLR8 agonist was safe in, in patients in this phase two study uh, for 24 weeks uh, and was associated with a, a moderate decline in HBS antigen. Now, to me, the real question is, whether uh, now that we know this uh, combination is safe, can induce some level of HBS decline, whether we can combine it with another immune modulator to enhance the rate of HBS decline. Now there was uh, something very unfortunate. There was a, a combination of nuke with a rigai agonist in Arigivir, which shows quite a promising results in the phase two trial, the chief trial with nice decline in DNA, RNA, uh, um, and also a, a little bit on HBS antigen. Uh, and it was then further continued for longer term administration from 12 weeks to 24 weeks in the catalyst trial. And unfortunately, this combination uh, of nuke plus in Arigivir 
uh, led to a severe side effect and, uh, and pati one patient died uh, in this clinical trial of, of lactic acidosis uh, and multi-organ failure. So the, the treatment was, uh, the development was stopped. Uh, and this is something to remind us that uh, patients um, the bar is very high because patients are, are doing very well on Nuke uh, and coming with uh, 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 new drugs is always very challenging. Now there are strategies to combine Nukes plus uh, um, approaches to, to stimulate uh, adaptive immunity. Uh, and we have seen a nice uh, study with Nuke uh, PD-1 blockade and therapeutic vaccine that was uh, published recently by Professor Gain. And you see here in that trial that uh, patients on the top of nucleoside analog receive a single dose of nivolumab, very low dose to be safe, uh, with or without uh, a therapeutic uh, uh, vaccine. Um, and you see the results in terms of HBS antigen decline with the nivolumab alone. Uh, one patient uh, lost HBS. Uh, and in the combination, triple combination with a therapeutic vaccine, you see a decline in HBS antigen, which remain, remain modest, but paves the way for future trials, uh, uh, um, um, which would be interesting to, to, to evaluate. Another strategy that has not been yet uh, um, the, uh, evaluated in clinical trials, but has been evaluated in, in mouse studies, uh, is a combination of antigen reduction, sRNA, uh, and immune stimulation with therapeutic vaccine. Very nice study uh, published recently in gastroenterology. And now we are eager to see whether uh, uh, inhibitors of replication, sRNA or antisense, and in therapeutic vaccine uh, could induce an HBS loss uh, rate at much higher rate. So, you see where we are, we have all these type of strategies, uh, very stimulating, very interesting. And now we will need clinical trials to see what will be the best combination to induce uh, a high rate of HBS loss. And for this, there are different type of uh, strategies. Um, uh, and mainly it's, it's the use of big clinical trial platforms uh, as you, that has been used for, for uh, um, in the oncology field, which may uh, help to study multiple targeted therapies in the context of a single disease using the same platform. So you don't, you, you have the same infrastructure, so you don't need to go uh, for uh, all the uh, regulatory approval and so on. And uh, uh, so you are within the same trial. So this is very, uh, powerful for big farmers. But I think we shouldn't forget exploratory trials for proof of concept studies in small group of patients uh, to, to test innovative approaches. And to finish, I would like also to, to, to give you some uh, a perspective for the future, which will be uh, uh, um, this, which are uh, based on the study of, of strategies that are in preclinical uh, uh, stage, the direct targeting of CCC DNA with gene editing, CRISPR, Cas9 targeting of CCC DNA, for instance, uh, or with base editors. Uh, and you know that uh, gene editing has been uh, on the uh, front line uh, with a Nobel Prize this year. Uh, and the other uh, approach is the specific uh, a killing of infected hepatocytes by redirecting T cells to infected cells by engineering T cells so that they target the infected cells. So these type of approaches are obviously uh, in preclinical development. And I would like to finish to, with um, uh, some hope. Uh, and I think with all the data we've seen, uh, uh, HBVQ will be an attainable goal within the next decades. The summit is uh, in our side, but it's still a, a big climb to, 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 to make again. Um, this will be based on the effort, ongoing effort of drug discovery, antivirals, immune therapy, uh, biomarkers, and evaluation in clinical trials. But I would like to, to also to, to remind us that we uh, will need also to work on the uh, public health issue and the access to care uh, in, in regions of the globe uh, where HBV is highly endemic. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention.
Thank you. Thank you, Professor Zulim, for this wonderful uh, overview on in, in a very exciting uh, subject. Um, before we uh, respond to some of the questions, so far I've seen only one question, I would like to ask you, in terms of the definition of functional cure, uh, do you think the functional cure will be, uh, it will be necessary provided that the DNA is really suppressed and replication is suppressed, do you think that the functional cure should, will be boosted periodically or do you think that we will have a way where we can stop the, uh, the replication once and for all? Um, you, you know, I mean, there are a, a lot of discussion uh, 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 around that. This is a very important question. There is, um, for instance, there are, um, because if we first, we, if we put the bar too high, uh, functional cure may not be achieved in phase two studies because you, we, we, we need to find the right regimen, the duration, the exact duration of treatment. So they are now um, uh, really um, consideration that if we see a decline in HBS antigen during treatment administration in these phase two studies, and that this HBS decline associated with viral suppression is sustained after drug withdrawal, this could be a signal to continue drug development in phase three. But this could be, even for phase three studies, um, achieving uh, uh, finally, uh, an inactive carrier state after just a six months treatment, if we achieve that in the majority of patients, this would be already a wonderful uh, goal and achievement. So, so you know, I mean, this, this is in, in, in discussion currently, uh, because if we put the bar too high, we will never reach it. And we, we may dismiss many drugs that, are, that could provide some benefit to patients. Thank you. Uh, we do have a number of questions and I will uh, get to a few of them. Uh, one question was, will these new therapies also address the cure of occult hepatitis B? This is um, a, a very uh, interesting, uh, interesting question. Um, uh, occult uh, HBV infection is very common in, uh, in Asia. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, is associated with difficult condition for patients undergoing uh, 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 chemotherapies or uh, uh, immunosuppressive therapies. So, um, you know, we, it's too early to say. Um, we will have to, um, to see uh, first what, what we are able to achieve in, uh, in our classic um, uh, chronic FB patients um, before we, we reach this, this discussion. But, but I agree, it's a very important point. So I would see it now more like um, maybe having uh, immune-based strategies in, in occult infection. Um, that would be very interesting. And the second point would be to have uh, drugs that are not available now for the clinic uh, that would target CCC DNA. Um, and that would be the real, the real way to, to really uh, target uh, the occult infection. Thank you. Now, there is one question. Uh, what, um, if you have a patient with co-infection with HBV and HCV, which one would you treat first? So HBV and HCV. Huh? Um, right. yeah. uh, I think... You know, it, what, what, what we do uh, uh, currently, I mean, with the drugs that are available, um, we usually uh, treat both uh, at the same time. Uh, so uh, so we, we use the uh, HCV drugs and the, uh, the nucleoside analogs for HBV. And then we, obviously we stop, we stop the HCV drugs after uh, eight weeks or 12 weeks, depending on, on, on the uh, drug that I use, and then we continue the nukes. But uh, I, would, I would not play around, you know, with uh, treating EPCs, looking at what's happening on FB and asking myself whether I should treat again H HBV or not. 
Uh, obviously, it depends on, on the clinical cases. Huh? Uh. Okay, thank you. Then there is another question. Uh, is there still a role for pegylated interferon in the treatment of chronic HBV? <laughs> As well, interesting question. Um, to, today, outside of clinical trials, uh, in, in my practice, and at least in Western uh, Occidental world, uh, pegylated interferon is really uh, not used uh, or very, very uh, uh, seldom used. Uh, I wouldn't dismiss interferon, pegylated interferon, in combination with the newer drugs. Um, because this is stimulating innate immunity, we know very well the drug, the side effect profile, and, and we, we know also what to expect with the drug. And you can imagine uh, combinations of drugs, uh, very potent uh, direct antiviral that we've seen, um, where at some point you could um, combine with a short course of interferon. I, I would see it this way. To, to boost innate immunity, then that would make sense. And some studies have addressed that. We've seen that with the replica studies, the nucleic acid polymer study. But there are also other strategies, new trials that are ongoing with capsid assembly modulators uh, and sRNA that will have a short course of interferon at some point. So I think we shouldn't dismiss it, but within clinical studies. Thank you. Then there is one question. Is there any way, since hepatitis B surface antigen is a biomarker today, can you differentiate between the HBS antigen produced by integrated DNA vis-a-vis uh, -vis HBS antigen that is uh, produced by the replicating virus? Because there is a difference in the biology of both situations. Yeah. Um, this is also an, uh, an important point, as I alluded to, I mean, it's the uh, HB, quantitative HBS is more complex than we thought, and this question is really addressing that. Um, the issue is that um, from integration, we have mainly, I say mainly, um, expression of the small HBS and uh, a bit of middle uh, uh, so it's a middle uh, surface protein. From CCC DNA, we can have all three forms, uh, the small s, the uh, uh, middle, and the large s. So w if you see the large s, you're almost sure that it comes from CCC DNA. But if you see the small s, it can come from both. So it will be difficult to, to, you know, to have a simple assay biomarker that could differentiate easily the two. Yes, thank you. That is a very important comment. Okay. Any other questions? I have not seen any other questions here. Um, uh, let me just have a quick look. Uh, I've seen some in the, in the chat. Any, uh, may I make a comment? Sure. Uh, yeah. uh, Leading to the uh, HPV HCV uh, co-infections, I, I think that I, I really concur with Fabian. So we have to treat both. It's not just uh, um, from the virological point of view, but then uh, we have uh, HPV reactivation problems uh, in those uh, co-infected, um, and uh, therefore, uh, I think that it is almost a must for those who are service antigen positive and have HCV and plan for. Uh, um, uh, direct acting antiviral agents therapies to be placed on or closely monitored. I think that they should be placed on uh, nukes for that reason to prevent HPV reactivation. So while we are trying to control the hepatitis C, but then um, uh, we're having the, the uh, well, uh, Fabian's given excellent reviews of all the, the compounds uh, in the in the pipelines uh, in an attempt to cure hepatitis B. And me and Danny actually, um, more than 20 years ago, so we, uh, we reported the adoptive immunity transfer for a service engine clearance and shows the importance of immunity uh, of uh, really getting a, a, a cure. But then having said that, um, uh, Fabian, can you enlighten us uh, about uh, the immunological studies involved and which uh, attempted in those uh, phase two uh, trials and uh, how does it correlate uh, with the um, 
because the surface energy is now artificially reduced, it's not the reflections. Uh, is this really a reflections of um, uh, immune recovery? Uh, or is it just the surface energy reductions? And having said that, uh, could, would that be an explanation that most of these compounds, uh, when they stop, they have uh, a rebound of the surface energy? Yeah. No, no, this is, um, George, this is a very, very uh, important question. Um, I mean, I didn't have time to, to obviously address all these points, but uh, it's very good for this discussion. The One of the issues, and I, I alluded that to uh, a little bit in, in the biomarker slide, is how do you use HBS? Is it when you're using an siRNA? Uh, it, it can be seen mainly as a, uh, an assessment of target engagement. If, if your siRNA works, it will, you will see a decline in the uh, vowel RNAs so, uh, and subsequently a decline in the expression of vowel antigen, including HBS. So this is the mode of action of the siRNA. It doesn't mean that the pool of CCC DNA has been uh, uh, eradicated or declined, and it doesn't mean that there was immune re reconstitution that maintained HBS uh, uh, suppressed. So, so the question is very valid and, and, and we, we need to really pro progress because we know that the, the decline in, uh, we suspect that HBS is important in the exhaustion of T cells. Um, we suspect. Now the, the question is whether a, de a decline in HBS induced by siRNA or antisense is sufficient to, to restore the the uh, immune responses so that we'll have a, a sustained control of the infection or whether we will need this suppression of HBS and then come with, with immune uh, modulatory approaches. I think uh, maybe in some patients, but it may be sufficient, just the but we will we'll have to learn huh, from the, tr the, the trials. But in my view, in the majority of patients, we will need to combine this siRNA or antisense approach with immune stimulatory approaches. And I think this is also one of the reasons why the therapeutic vaccines have failed so far, because they were used in combination with nukes, where we know that the level of, it, of vowel antigen remains very high. So the exhaustion of T cell is still there. So coming with a therapeutic vaccine, you see a little bit of immune stimulation, but it's not sufficient to, to, to control the infection. So I would really like to see what, what, uh, what I uh, proposed at, at the end of the, uh, of the talk, uh, uh, strategies that would combine this uh, siRNA induced decline in HBS and then come with a therapeutic vaccine uh, together or not with checkpoint inhibitors. This has to be to be to be uh, addressed, huh, obviously. Thank well, you. Chairman, may I have one question? Uh, thank you, Professor Lau. Do the other panelists uh, have any questions, Professor? Yes, Katir uh, uh, yes. from Turkey. Yes. Uh, HPV infection is still is a worldwide problem. Uh, I think the main goal for the treatment is the elimination of the CCC DNA. And there are a lot of uh, studies for uh, this uh, goal. Uh, I'm asking to uh, Fabian, uh, what's your opinion? When is it possible to eliminate CCC DNA? Huh. Uh, you know, we, for, for the, um, CCC DNA, um, we, there are a strategy with CRISPR-Cas9 uh, that are evaluated in, in, in cell culture and, and animal models. So CRISPR-Cas9 was a, as a, on the front line uh, because the, disco the, the discoverers of, uh, of CRISPR-Cas9 got the Nobel Prize in, uh, in October this year. Um, so this, this type of technology is, is being really uh, um, uh, investigated in experimental models. It's more complex than we, we, we thought before. We, when you do studies in, in, in um, 
uh, with infected hepatocytes, what you have actually with CRISPR-Cas9 is um, either uh, inducing mutations in CCC DNA um, uh, that may silence it, uh, or degradation, but degradation of CCC DNA um, seems not to be the main mechanism. So the main mechanism seems to be indu induction of mutation in the CCC DNA. Um, so we'll have to learn, you know, uh, and one of the, um, there are two, two challenges with CRISPR-Cas9. Uh, one is um, the delivery for, for patients. Uh, so we'll have to work on that. Uh, and the second one is that depending on, on strategies, but now they are improving, some strategies can induce double, uh, uh, double strand DNA break. And this wouldn't be good because this could um, be, um, this could favor uh, chromosomal recombination with the integrated sequences. So CCC DNA and integrated sequences in chromosomes, then this, if there are double strand breaks and they could recombine and make some bad things. So, but there are now new strategies that do not induce the double strand breaks. It's mainly with what we call base editors. So they're just doing point mutation in CCC DNA. So a, a lot of work to be done. It's not tomorrow. Yeah. Really. Uh, Professor Colombo is asking, uh, is there any rationale to test effectiveness of preemptive therapy uh, in waitlisted patients for liver transplantation with uh, ASRO? Ah, with antisense. Uh, yeah. um, I think today it's too early. Today it's too early because I did not have time to, to mention that. Um, but in the uh, in, in the clinical trial that was um, presented at EASL uh, uh, just two months ago, um, the HBS antigen decline was associated with ALT elevation, uh, which may be a sign of, you know, some kind of immune recon reconstitution. But I fear that in, uh, in uh, uh, patients on, on the waiting list who, who have severe liver damage, uh, they are cirrhotics. Uh, this type of ALT elevation uh, may be dangerous or should be taken with caution. So I think we, the cirrhotic patients waiting for liver transplantation will need to be addressed later on once we know more about all these new, new drugs. They, they, uh, but it's true that if we can lead to HBS clearance. I, I understand the question. If we can lead to HBS clearance before transplantation, maybe we won't need to have H big uh, uh, prophylaxis after transplantation. So that, I think, was the question behind that. Yeah, indeed. There were several questions on this issue, but I go to the last question. What is a clinical, uh, what clinical and immunological markers would allow cessation of nuke treatment uh, during functional cure? Ah, um, you know, um, there are two, two different things. Um, one, one is um, to say, well, uh, based on the experience with nukes and with interferon, there are a few publication. We, we published um, one, one recent uh, paper with, with analog um, together on where we, um, based on the an analysis of uh, um, all the tenofovir trials, uh, with or without interferon, and what we showed is that if HBS antigen loss is confirmed on 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 three different occasions, um, then you can stop treatment safely, and there is very rarely a re uh, um, a, re a, re a zero reversion. Um, so that, that's, a f that's the first thing, and, th and we don't need H actually anti-HBS antibody seroconversion to maintain uh, HBS loss. Uh, but as it was based on, on the nuke experience, we don't know with the new drugs, we'll have to see. Uh, the other thing which, is, which could be very interesting is at some point with the new antivirals that I showed you, 
uh, for, for instance, nucleoside analogs and capsid assembly modulators or siRNA in combination, can we stop treatment before HBS loss? If HBS has been has declined to very, very low level, can we stop at some point? The issue is that we don't have the biomarkers to tell us to identify the patients that would benefit from that. Uh, there are a few attempts, and, uh, and there was, for instance, the a study with Vepicovir, the capsid assembly modulator, with an, combina combined with Antecavir. They, uh, for 72 weeks, they, they look at patients who had obviously HBV DNA undetectable, pregenomic RNA undetectable in serum, and they did, decided to stop in these patients. Most of the patients relapsed after a few weeks, despite profound viral suppression. Um, now we, it's too early. I mean, this observation is very early. We don't know, let's say, uh, if we wait for six months, like we do with nukes, maybe they will relapse and then undergo functional cure. That we don't have this information. So, so we are still missing that part. But bio, the biomarker question is very important and we need to work uh, very carefully in clinical studies to, so that we can learn how to use them. So I think that's a take home message, uh, really do studies to learn. Yeah, very important. Thank you. Are there any uh, other comments from the panelists? panelists? Professor Hasmik, do you have any comments? No comment. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Fabian, for a nice talk. Uh, no, any comment. Thank you. Thank you. And Professor Sarin? Fabian, uh, you know, we started these therapies of, uh, uh, you know, stimulating the CD8 T cells by decreasing viral DNA. While uh, Yunfin Leo used to give steroids and give steroid pulse, and we were giving uh, lamovidine pulse, like give lamp for a while, wait, stop, and then let the CD8s come up. And then subsequently we had the sequential therapy, a few couple of uh, publications, but then somehow, uh, you know, larger studies due to lack of any sponsorship could never be taken up. The question I have in mind, uh, do you have any suggestions on uh, uh, what should be the level uh, of uh, HPV DNA suppression when you can immune modulate with second preferon or something? And if that is a good concept, according to you. Huh. The, um, it's interesting. Um, you know, uh, from what we, we know from different clinical studies, um, um, I mean, just looking at the antiviral effect of combination of nukes and interferon, or studies that look at the uh, uh, expression of interferon-stimulated gene in the liver uh, uh, of patients. I think uh, when we try to, to summarize all this data and try to, to, to see what, what we can what is would be the message there? I think what is important is not only the inhibition of our replication, but again, as we we discussed before, is the uh, level of our antigen expression. It seems uh, from the intrahepatic studies that have been performed that the uh, the more the HBS antigen is expressed. Uh, the less the uh, interferon responsiveness is. So the uh, innate, uh, innate signaling is repressed uh, in the liver when you have high HBS antigen. So, so, so this might be also one of the reasons why interferon is not working that well in the majority of patients. So, so if we could, and, and this is also why it's interesting to, to think of interferon differently maybe coming with a, a suppression of HBS with a, uh, an other vowel antigen by siRNA and then come with in short course with interferon because all these studies have shown that if you have less HBS, 
Uh, interferon works better clinically, but also in the liver, when you look at innate signaling, it is restored. I mean, so, so I think uh, these would be ways to, 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 uh, to, to see the, the, uh, the future of interferon, if, if it has any. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'd just like to conclude, first of all, to thank uh, Professor Zulin for this outstanding presentation and overview of the field, and also express our excitement of, of the future of uh, antiviral treatment in hepatitis B. There are still many hurdles to solve, many open questions, and a number of clinical trials ahead. But there is some hope at the end of the tunnel, some light at the end of the tunnel. And hopefully <clears throat> we will be there within a few years. Thank you very much, Professor Zulim, and thank you for all the panelists. And thank you for the Asian Pacific Association for the study of the liver. Thank you. Yeah, I would like also to, to thank you uh, for, for this very nice discussion. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm also open to respond to, to questions by email if, if the audience has, has questions. So uh, really thank you for the invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Fabian. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice evening. Have a nice day. <laughs>